So we need to take the derivative. This is a product of two functions. We have a rule called the product rule for doing just that. So I probably will stop writing down all of the like long winded details for this kind of stuff and just say it verbally. So we'll take the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x times cosine of x with no derivative. And then we're gonna add that to e to the x times the derivative of cosine x. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we'll have a sine of x here, and then I'll put the minus sign between them. So now critical points are where this equals zero, which means we need to solve the equation e to the x times cosine of x minus sine of x equals zero. Observe that what I did there is I like factor the e to the x out just because that's going to be helpful for as we do our solving. Now we've got a product of two functions equals zero. That means one of them has to be equal to zero, which means we have e to the x equals zero or we have uh, cos x equals sine x. I'll just go ahead and move that over to the other side of the equation. It's really cos minus sine equals zero, but adding the sine over, we get cos equals sine. But now, does anyone remember where e to the x equals zero? Yeah, yeah, it never happens, right? So there's a no solution over here. So exponential functions, real exponential functions are never zero. And just recall like the general shape of a real exponential function and we'll kind of know why. They look like this or maybe the mirror image of that. The important thing is they never cross the x-axis, right? Which is where they would be equal to zero. So there's no solution to that. Then when is cosine equal to sine? This is one to like potentially remember, although you can look it up in a trig chart. Yeah, 45 degrees. Okay, so it's 45 degrees, which is pi over four. And then, well, there are gonna be some other values too because of the way that cosine and sine work. That's the value in the first quadrant. There's gonna be another value in the third quadrant when they're both negative, right? Let's see, that's gonna be like five, that's gonna be like five pi over four. Notice in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant, they have opposite signs, right? One is positive and one is negative. And then, well, there are gonna be more here too. So we don't really need to worry about that. Generally, whenever you have a problem like this, you just write them between zero and two pi or something. But if you wanted to, you could just say, oh, this is plus two times n times pi, and then this is plus two times n times pi, as n runs over all integers. 